very good morning to each one of you on behalf of Bangalore okay. Chamber of Industry and Commerce. We welcome you all for this exclusive session on due diligence in hospitality industry, a perspective. The session is addressed by Mr. P.G. Subramaniam, who is the former CEO of Golden Palms Hospitality and Secretary Indian Cutting Tool Manufacturers Association. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation to address at this session. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much. Thank you. The session is organized under the aegis of the Tourism, Hospitality and Travel Expert Committee of the Chamber that is led by Mr. Vineet Verma, who is the Director of Brigade Hospitality, co-chaired by Ms. Pushpa Tantri of Akshara Foundation and Ms. Sanchari Chaudhary of IIHM Bangalore. The Chamber also acknowledges the support of our member organization for their contribution towards the activities of the Chamber for the year. Mm. Uh, they are Mrs. Bueller, Fundamax, IAMPL, MTR, Sona Group, SDMIMD, TVS Motor, Vishwas Group and Vipro. Thank you once again for all of you for joining this session. And now I invite uh, Mr. P.G. Subramaniam to take over from here. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Rupa, can you start with this thing? Slides start. Can you start it off? Hello? Rupa? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Very good morning to each and every one of you. At the outset, let me thank the Bangladesh Chamber of Interest in Commerce for giving an opportunity to address the members on this very important topic of due diligence in the hospitality industry. You can flip the, this thing now. Go to the next slide. Hello? Again, again, go up, go up. Yeah. Uh, what do we understand by the term complaints needs to be understood before we get into the subject of due diligence? Because unless we are very, very clear on what compliance means, the due diligence exercise will be a waste of time. Compliance in simple terms can be defined as adhering to regulations on timely basis, ensuring that all the returns, etc. are filed on time as per the various laws and regulations that are enforced today, and then compliance to the operational standards, SOPs, like this, many are there. And coming to hospitality industry, as you many people, many of you may be aware, it operates in a very complicated structure, and multiple regulations apply to the industry, that is, apart from the regular regulations that are under statute like the taxation angle and uh, the licensing requirements, etc. So many other regulations also need to be followed because you are working in an industry where the guest interactions are on a day-to-day basis. So those aspects also need to be taken care of. And unless each and every staff member is working in the industry, are trained on a day-to-day -day basis to follow strictly in letter and spirit the standard operating procedures, the compliance loses its meaning. At the same time, the standard operating procedure that is that the standard operating procedure means they are the ones which drive the operation of the hotel at each and every stage in various departments. So those need to be followed to the toe. Nothing can be compromised as far as operating processes are concerned. At the same time, keeping in mind the changes that happened in the industry on a regular basis, the yeah. SOPs need to be reviewed and also revised as and when required. And as part of the due diligence used to be conducted in the olden days only with respect to when takeover processes to happen or amalgamations, etc. But now, Taking into consideration the competitive atmosphere in which the industry operates, perhaps due diligence exercises need to be done internally to ensure that we are following every compliances on time and also the risk perceptions are taken care of so that the industry survives. Because today, the industry is facing several challenges from all areas and operating a hotel is no joke anymore. Okay, before I go on to the next stage of the presentation, 
let me address the risk perspectives which the industry is facing today because perhaps risk perception has assumed a significant importance today in in the light of the various risk the challenges the company the hotel industry faces for example today the business of the industry is witnessing unprecedented levels of occupations and volumes perhaps it has gone back to the pre covid levels partly this may be due to the fact that two to one half years people were confined to their homes they could not move anywhere they could not socialize after all man is a social animal so people have begun traveling to such an extent that it was not seen before so that is posing its own challenges some of the risks which the company and industries are facing is operations because new standards have to be followed in the in line with the covid protocols that the government has introduced and wants the industry to continue to follow them in order to ensure that we don't fall prey to the lurking danger of the pandemic visiting us again as you all know what is happening today in china so people are a little bit skeptical about it those industry standards need to be followed which require a minimum dose of investment to be done so that those risks are mitigated and faced then added to the supply chain constraints again arising out of the pandemic the entire system has been thrown off balance and the suppliers who existed before have all vanished from the scene are are finding it difficult to come back to this thing whereas the guests do not understand it they want the number one facility to be provided is for the money they give it to you so those challenges need to be addressed very carefully so that there is no disruption in supply and the guest facilities continue uninterrupted then human resources this is perhaps the biggest challenge the industry is facing today because thanks to the pandemic many of the hotels were forced to lay off the staff and they all went for alternate employment opportunities and today finding a trained manpower is becoming next to impossible and hotels are finding it very difficult to service the customers and guests to their satisfaction this is the major challenge is the risk of the hotel industry keeps on saying that we need to promote tourism etc needful is not being done by the government so that the industry can function without it for instance the regulations keep changing and from state to state it varies added to this the central government policies which keep on changing also add to the pressure and despite the industry is pleading with the government to accord it to the right status that it is required it is not being adhered to till today we are required to follow a lot of other things and we are not accorded industry status it becomes difficult and one of the thing is all of us are done the government of india under the foreign trade policy used to give what is called serve from india scheme incentives which means for every penny of foreign exchange you earn you get 5% as duty credit script that scheme has been withdrawn all of a sudden and it has put the industry in great trouble apart from that pressure on cost the cost of operations are increasing as i told one example is manpower cost it used to be a typical hotel industry the manpower cost should not exceed more than 20 to 25% all put together but today thanks to the prevailing circumstances it is overshooting because it find is becoming difficult to find the right trained talented manpower that is one of the things then risk of fraud fraud is all prevalent everywhere which is a very big challenge to the whole industry thanks to the online fraud that happens apart from that internal fraud like theft on the hotel staff connivance then wastage everything is another problem it is estimated that close to around 1.2 trillion us dollars are lost by the industry due to fraud alone and it is only going to go up so this this needs to be assessed and taken care of then this slide next slide please okay why do we come need for compliance i'm touching upon this complaints as because this needs to be understood so that a proper due diligence exercise is conducted compliance is non negotiable in any business leave alone the hospitality industry 
every business requires proper compliance at all point of time so that your industry runs in a proper way and you are not hauled up for not, not complying with anything. And as I mentioned earlier, all set standards have to be followed in full and processes have to be taken care of. And this periodic assessment of compliance of each area, including assessment of risks involved in processes and procedures, is a hallmark of any hotel well governed and run. For this, what normally we do is we have what is called a compliance chart placed before us, which is reviewed on a monthly basis. That compliance chart encompasses the compliances, but also the operational compliance which each every department has to go through. Then budgetary compliances, profit and loss compliances, everything is earmarked and management sits and reviews on a monthly basis and takes corrective action. This needs to be done without any fail. Then good company import. I mean, I mean, really recognition the importance of compliance management, companies, employee, chief compliance officer. But the hotel industry as of today has not reached that level where you require or require uh, point a chief compliance officer. But if things continue to go the way things are going on and the complexity increases, probably we will be required to employ a compliance officer who will be vested with the sole responsibility of ensuring that all compliances are in place, which means the man who takes charge of that should be well versed with the operations of the hotel industry. Apart from his knowledge of what the laws, regulations, rules, etc., are required to be followed by the industry. You can go to the next chart, ma'am. As I told you earlier, these are all the basic things in which due diligence exercise required and arises due to mergers, acquisitions, corporate restructuring, corporate governance related matters, IPOs, FPOs, private equity. General compliance requirements, commercial agreements, leverage by your joint ventures, risk assessment, and corporate governance. These are all the common occasions where due diligence exercises take place. But this is a very narrow form of what this is generally it happens. But the way things are going on today, there's nothing wrong in introducing a due diligence mechanism among ourselves in the industry so that along with it, you do a thorough check. In fact, the checklist of due diligence is so vast, it may not be possible for me to cover everything in this one hour session. Anyway, I'll try to do justice to the topic. You can go to the next uh, thing. Okay. How do you conduct a due diligence exercise? How do you start it? Unless you know, today the field is vast open for professionals who want to conduct this exercise. Various companies, with the opening up of the global economy and the complexities that are set in to do business and hotel industry is not an exemption for it. They are also into all this. So if you want to do a thorough due diligence exercise, you need to have a very good understanding of the entity and the industry which you propose to conduct due diligence of. Without this, the due diligence exercise is a non-starter. And it is always better that we have a proper checklist of the various areas which we propose to cover for the purpose of due diligence exercise so that you do justice. But that checklist which you prepare need not be sacrosanct and you need not stick to it because in the process and while conducting due diligence, you may come across some areas which you feel need to be gone into much deeper. So the scope of the checklist can always be expanded as required. Don't stick to the demarcated and laid down procedures alone. You can go above that also so that the due diligence becomes a very successful exercise. Then factual understanding of the segment is very necessary. Consider the clarity of the industry and over and above it. Please remember that the due diligence exercise which is conducted is between only the person who conducts it and the entity who is being subjected to due diligence and accordingly a non-disclosure agreement need to be entered into. That is, you agree with a particular client that you will not divulge the data and other things which you came across with 
offered the permission to the client because these are all very top secret documents. But I'll tell you, you will be going much deeper into it and you will understand everything about the entity whom for whom you are conducting due diligence. So it is sacrosanct that it is not leaked out to anybody and not discussed anywhere else. It is very, very important. And confidentiality has to be maintained at all levels. Can we go to the next slide, ma? Yes. As I told you earlier, the industry operates in different environment in service sector because the and accordingly the industry operates. There are common laws and regulations. There are certain specific regulations and licensing requirements which are not applicable to the other industries. Then aspects related to guest relations, past history, service agreements, loyalty program management, etc., which needs to be studied carefully. I'll give you a simple example only related to loyalty program management. One of the hotels in which I was working as CFO had entered into an agreement to manage the loyalty program. What is, first of all, what is a loyalty program? We need to understand. This is to reward the guests who patronize the hotel on a regular basis. That is, for every time they come and occupy, they are given certain benefits under a program called loyalty program, which can't should and there is a small membership levy to that based on which the guests are allowed to occupy one room in a year for free cost and then during marriage etc marriage and anniversary wedding anniversary etc you are given cakes and so on and so forth the loyalty programs are run so one of this hotel entered into a loyalty program agreement with one of the outside vendors to run the whole thing it trans the agreement was so loosely worded that it is totally open ended and it is open to abuse by the service provider because of the ignorance or I will say not paying much attention to drafting agreement in a proper fashion. With the result, this particular entity which was supposed to render services to the hotel collected the membership. The agreement was the entity will collect the money. Remit 70% of that to the hotel, keep 80% of the message operating cost to run the loyalty program. What he did was he collected all the money from all the people, failed to remit it to the hotel, and later on, the guests started coming to the hotel and started asking for benefits they rented to under the loyalty program. And because of the fact that the hotel was not at all aware that so and so few person has sold the membership, it created a very big issue for it. And later on, Despite getting into a suit and agreeing with the particular service provider, till today the money has not been recovered. The guests have all gone very badly, unsatisfied, and it brought a big disrespect to the hotel, which is the operating loyalty program, and he hit the business very badly. And till today, they are suffering from the past. Important. Similarly, when entering into service agreements, also we need to be very, very careful while executing agreements for the purpose. So today it's a common thing which you see that you, uh, what do you call, uh, you give everything to outsiders to run the show so that you could let pressure on the man show, like housekeeping agreements, sorry, security agreements, then uh, generator. So many agreements are there which need to be entered into. Those needs to be very carefully studied and structured so that you don't enter into problem. A simple thing is when you enter into service agreement, the manpower is deployed by the particular agency rendering the service. You need to be very sure whether the persons who are being deputed or of all been verified properly, background verification has been checked, everything has been done so that before they come into a hotel, they their hands are clean. Similarly, the company is required to pay the minimum wages that is required to be given to them. All the service industry statutory requirements would have to be paid whether those things have been done or not these all need to be checked in the agreement and it should be incorporated and followed up very very clearly okay go to the next slide yeah as i told you the first step before commencing any due diligence in hospitality is prepare a 
thorough checklist of what in in this thing you want to look into, what information you need from them. It has to be and need to be collated. We will go through what is these things are. These are all from company act angle. First thing is that is registered name of the company with details of subsidiary, if any, with address, date of incorporation of the SIN number. What I suggest is please obtain a copy of the memorandum and articles of association. Go through them very, very clearly from line to line. Do not miss anything out so that the object clause are read clearly and you find out that the company is operating only with the stated objects therein and not deviating from it. That needs to be brought out if there are deviations. So that can create havoc, especially if company, some company commissions you to conduct a due diligence exercise for the purpose of takeover. That needs to be seen very, very carefully. Then history of the company. How will you do the history? This requires you are studying of the not only the audited financial statements, including the auditor's report, but also the background check as to what the company has been operating, how many years it has been business, what has been the feedback of the company, how the business has moved, and how the how it has been the business has been conducted. All the things will have to be gone through in a very very careful manner. It may time it is time consuming, no doubt, but then you need to be done so that you are well aware as to what you are bargaining for and you're not you given any shocks after the company is taken over and you are required to repair it at a very heavy cost this year i'll tell you one as a very interesting story one of the hotel companies which was taken over by another one commissioned a chartered accountants firm with due respect to our profession they were required to conduct a due diligence exercise of the property they conducted it, everything went through, the company has acquired, but then later on, when the company started, took it over and started running the operations, it was found that some of the very, very important and key areas have not been looked into by the agency which conducted the due diligence exercise. For example, this company which was taken over had defaulted heavily in respect to service tax commitments. Those days when service tax was in operation, and they are not paid the VAT, they are not paid the TDS, and with the result, after the company was taken over, this company in Chitikuta vested with the liability of close to 30 crores. You can imagine the havoc it can pay on the operational thing. When you are required to run, conduct the business, run the operations, when you are required also to follow these things, it creates a lot of problem for the person who has taken over the company, putting a heavy strain on the resources, including finance. So this aspect has to be studied very, very carefully. And there may be some cases where the hotels operate on a global basis. So there was next needs to be gone through very carefully where they are in other areas and what are the licenses, etc. They are required to obtain the country according to the regulation that operates there also need to be gone through. Then quality certification. You know very well the hallmark of any big hotel is maintaining very strict quality standards in all operating areas related to the operation. So they needs to be, this also had to be done. Okay. Should I move the slide, sir? Hello. Next slide, please. Next slide, next slide. Now come to management. Names of members of the board of directors with a brief summary of the experience and directorship held. Here, go back, go back. Go back, ma. Yeah. Here, when you come to the directors, please also ensure that the directors are not disqualified from holding directorships in the company which they are holding because the laws relating to appointment directors and the these things are very, very clear, including their KVCs, everything need to be followed to the T and ensure that they have all been done update. Otherwise, it becomes a disqualification for the director to continue to hold the directorship. Then, if there are any interest in shares, options, etc., 
issue to any of the directors. Even that need to be gone through and taken note of. And details of contracts. This, of course, these are very big reporting thing which need to be very carefully entered because various provisions of the Companies Act, everything applies here. So that need to be studied very carefully and noted. And if the company are granted any outstanding loans to the directors, that need to be noted into the names of key managerial personnel. Here I would suggest that please do not end at only taking the names, etc. Please also try to find out if possible what his anecdotes are, where was he employed before, what was his uh, background, whether the background checks have been done correctly. Because today, employing a person as much as much as it's difficult to get, it is also risky to employ people because it, it can rebound in the company very badly later. And totally have to pay very high price for it. Then what is the corporate governance structure? As you all know, today corporate governance has taken a very big lead and the government as well as the corporates has started realizing how good practice it is to have a proper corporate governance structure so that the company's reputation is not at stake. Putting forth a very good corporate governance structure is imperative and it has to be ensured that the governance structure is followed to the T so that it becomes easy for them to manage the company. Go to the next uh, slide, Ma. Share capital, details relating to authorized and paid up share capital, shareholders, classes of shares, etc. Details of unpaid shares, if any, rights of shareholders, purposes of the capital, all these need to be studied very, very carefully. And along with it, ensure that all the returns, etc. related have been filed and uh, whether any there are any physically held shares even today, which where are demat thing is required, those things need to be studied and reported upon if there are any. And also find out whether any third party agency is managing the show. Then what is the agreement entered with them? What are the rights and the things requested with them? Whether they're adhering to it, whether any grievances of the shareholders which are not attended to, those things need to be gone through very, very carefully. Okay, go to the next slide. Secretarial. This, of course, if a company secretary exists in the company, it makes your task that much easy, but if it is outsourced, it becomes more of a responsibility for you to follow everything. As I told you, the memorandum and articles of association study each every deviations and the articles are all being followed properly. Those things need to be seen very carefully. For certificate of comments, as I told the confirmation, the business carried on as objects. Details are done parcels. See, as you all know, whichever industry we are operating in, the land can be either owned or leased. If so, whether the documents that are are all properly regarded and mature, where deposits have been given, all those things need to be very, very carefully gone through. And List of all statutory registers which are required to be maintained, whether they're updated on a regular basis, there are any loop, not loop, no loopholes, etc. have to be done. Encumbrance, as I told you, then details of meetings. That is, whether all meetings have been recorded correctly, even if it is virtually, you are required to record the proceedings of the meetings virtually and preserve them for a number of years as required under the Companies Act. And if it is a physical meeting which has started happening now, the minute books, etc., attendance of the director's concern, shareholders' concern, where the required quorum is present, what resolutions are passed, but was also by the provision of the A resolution has been passed by the company very carefully. Then statutory reports, then whether they have been filed on time, whether the money is paid, whether there is a delay, what is the reason for delay, whether accountability has been fixed, these things need to be gone through. But this is possible only if you adhere 
to the compliance chart that I mentioned earlier. Prepare it and follow it up. That helps you in a big way to do it. You can go to the next slide, Mark. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Then go through the audited financials together. The started auditors report for last three years to see that there are no adverse remarks by the auditors. What is the financial accounts tell you? Many times. This requires a little bit of an expertise on our part to read the financial statements. What it reply reveals it to more of a time. The number jargon is so cleverly worded, it becomes difficult for you to get into it. If you are not not a finance person, but an operational person, it is suggested that please take the help of a fan who is financially well versed and he will guide you through how to read the financials and make something out of it. And if there are deviations to report it, it makes your job easy. In other words, due diligence exercise is nothing but a teamwork. For instance, the chartered accountant may not be in a position to conduct the operational area due diligence as the operation man can do it and vice versa. So it's very important that it is read very, very carefully. The management accounts prepared along with reconciliation between financial and management accounts. This is assuming significant importance of late due to the complexity that has come into picture. For instance, in a typical hotel, which is run operationally, we have what is called departmental payroll account. Every department has got its own target set for the year and it needs to meet with it. In the beginning year itself, the budgets are set and they are reviewed very, very regularly, including the operational parameters which are prepared and whether there are any deviations. If there are deviations, whether they have been very carefully analyzed, studied and actions taken to see that it does not repeat again. And there are also what is called. The even p &L account that is for every event which a hotel conducts profit and loss accounts are prepared. We prior to that we prepare what is called a performa p &L account even to ensure that we don't end up making a loss when the event is conducted. Later on the actuals are compared and seen whether they are into T, whether we made any loss, if so, whether what is the reason for the loss, and if it is acceptable, it is accepted. Otherwise, corrective measures are taken so that you don't continue to incur losses while conducting the events. Copies of budgets, dividend payouts, unordered financial statements, accounts receivables, payables, the dispute, if any, that needs to be studied very, very carefully. If there are large outstandings, what is the reason for it, why it is not recovered, whether they become bad, whether provisions have been made, whether any effort has been put in, and you will be aware that many corporates enter into contracts with the hotels and tie up the rates with them on a regular basis. It needs to be studied. Corporate wise agreements entered into what are the rates offered, whether any deviations from the standard just to grab the business and how the particular corporate behaves as far as the business is concerned, how many times they're given business, whether they're prompt in paying their money to the hotel concerned, whether there are any deviations, and if so, whether they've been put on alert and again revisited. And sometimes what happens is credit periods are given up to about 30 days for each corporate, depending upon the credit rating of the entity concerned. So even before you enter into contract, rate contract with them, the credit rating of the party has to be studied and detailed structure has to be given. So whether those processes have been followed need to be gone through while conducting a due diligence. Same operates with relevance to the suppliers also. How, how many times we are going into the details of it? What is the monitoring done? How is the party behaving? Whether any quality checks have been done, whether any problems with him, there are any delays, those things need to be gone through very carefully. Then capital expenditure, what approvals have been taken, whether it, it was we studied very carefully, whether it is required to be spent, and if necessary, whether approvals have been taken, those things have to be gone through. Then cash flow statements and working capital management. This assumes significant importance. Because today resources are very scarce. And I'll tell you, hotel industry finds it very difficult to get working capital from the banks or institutions concerned because I've been a part of it. Because of the industry not being given the infrastructure status even today, the margins that are required are very huge as far as the industry is concerned. Sometimes depending on the rateability of the entity, up to 50% margin is insisted upon before the balance 50% is released. So this is what happened. This scares the industry away 
for approaching the hotel, man, banks, both in capital. So efficiently, if you do not manage it, you will by find we find this will binding because one small disruption affects the entire operating chain as far as the money is concerned. Unless money rotates, it will become difficult for you to operate the hotel. Then role of cost control net auditor. Cost controller is one person who plays a significant role in the hospitality industry because he is the one who is vested with authority to see that the costs are all under control and he is responsible for preparing periodic reports on a regular basis and give it to the manager monthly to find out what, how the operations have gone on, what has been the price at which commodity has been purchased, they're all under control, whether there any deviations, where the parameters are being exceeded, those things you need to go, go through very carefully, including the liquor that is being consumed in the hotel because it is open to abuse. I can tell you several instances where in connivance with the guest concerned, the banker people will siphon off the liquor without your knowledge and the bill will not be made to them because there will be understanding between them. It takes a lot of effort on them to find out because the regular reconciliations need to be done of the liquor stock, which is the responsibility of the cost controller. The night auditor plays a significant role as far as the night operations are concerned because total industry requires like banks which are doing it today. Every day the operations need to be closed at the stroke of 12 in the midnight. For the particular period of time, the, everything will be stopped. This man will go and check everything because, for instance, what is the business that has gone in banquets, whether all the billing have been done correctly, whether the money has been collected, or if the credit has been given, whether it has been signed up correctly, and then restaurant collections, all cash collections, including front office operation. He checks and prepares a report, including what has been the occupancy, what has been the ARR that was there in the previous night, all those things he gives details and gives a report to the management on a daily basis in the morning. And that is debated and discussed in the morning meeting, which is held on a regular basis in the hotel. So you have to go through while conducting the whether the night auditor has performed his rule accordingly. This is very, very important because it will have a bearing on the ultimate due diligence report, which you will submit to the management. Go to the next slide, Ma. Banking facilities, borrowings from third parties, financial grants, this need to be gone through. As I told you, the op industry operates in a different environment and a lot of uh, margins are insisted upon and it becomes a little difficult. But at the same time, monies are given by the bank, not that they don't give it, they do give it. So oh, what is the facility, whether the entity has been prompt in repaying the dues concerned and they are not in irregularity and whether any third party borrowing has been resorted to, if so, what is the rate at which they have done, what is the repayment period, whether the interest, etc., that is due to them, have been paid on time, all those things need to be gone through. Financial grants, very, very few states today are giving financial grants, like sales tax holiday or some discount, etc., on this thing, but it is not very much as far as the industry is concerned. And employment matters. What is the HR policy? What is the training policy? How often the employees are trained? What are the benefits that are given to them? What is the method employed as far as employees are concerned? What is the screening done? And plus in the industry, we have what is called casual workers and ODC boys. For instance, the industry cannot afford to employ everybody hoping that the business will come to you. For instance, outdoor catering is a very big business for the hotel industry. So hoping that outdoor catering will come to you, you cannot keep manpower with you. At that point of time, what happens is the industry hires people from outside for the purpose of ensuring that the catering goes through very, very well without any hitches. So what is the policy of the hotel defense? Who is the agency employed to deliver the thing? What is the background of the fellow that is employed? All the things need to be gone through very carefully. Then coming to property, deals of leasehold, properties occupied with the hotel, with deals ensure tenure, that I told you already, if the particular hotel has taken a temporary, which is very, very rare, if at all it has taken, what is the agreement that is ended? What is the rent that the hotel pays for it? That need to be gone through very carefully, revisions, increases, etc. Whether the person who has tenanted it out has a proper right over the property, not that he has got, got into some sort of a litigation with anybody, those things need to be gone through very carefully. Then details of licenses. This is the most cumbersome part of a due diligence exercise because 
a hotel is required in the present day circumstances, depending upon the state in which it operates, to acquire not less than 70 to 80 licenses. I never seen this. It was becoming a big task for us to follow up these licenses alone to ensure that we don't deviate anywhere. Name it. Any authority will come and tell you you don't have this license, you don't have that life license. How did you conduct the business? So these needs to be first of all, you have to make make a checklist of what is the license that the industry is required to operate in a particular state because the due diligence excesses may not be restricted to state where you are residing. You may be called upon to conduct excess in some other place also. So before you even commence it, you need to go through what are all the licenses particular state requires for the industry to operate. That checklist has to be made and you have to see whether the licenses are all renewed properly, whether they are on time, that has to be seen very carefully. Okay. Then approvals required for immobile property. If anything is required, that needs to be gone through, like fire license. Everything needs to be checked correctly. Then occupations of the property tax, whether it is paid on time, those things need to be gone through. Valuation report. If at all the hotel has got, got, got anything valuation done, what is the report? Whether it is it is current one, old one, what is the reason why the valuation report is obtained? What is the format? How did the use of was done? Need to be gone through. Then, as usual, complete schedule of all plant and machinery, motor vehicles, furniture fix, everything needs to be taking again there also you need to find out whether it is owned one or leased one lease things can happen only in respect of motor vehicles it may not happen in respect of other assets normally it's all owned by the hotel concerned only motor vehicles will be there here one thing you need to go through is you will find in a hotel you would have seen already that there are hotels which have car rental services for this what they do is hotels do not by their own cars becomes it becomes difficult to maintain cars. A big five star rental, for instance, will have a fleet of 20 to 30 cars at any given point of time. And imagine the cost of maintaining them, including employing a driver, etc., and running around is a very big task. So, what they do is they enter into contracts with people who let out cars to the hotels for running and then maintain it on a particular thing. So that contract needs to be gone through very carefully. What is the kind of this thing? Obligations of the person who rents out regards to them. What kind of maintenance he needs to do? What is the driver is employing? What is the background of that fellow? And who is the person who is renting it out? What is his background? All these things need to be gone through very, very carefully. OK, go to the next slide. Ma. Operational matters. Critical now technologies. But normally what happens is technologies, etc. don't play much of a role in the hotel concern. What great technology is there? But if it is an international hotel chain, they have their own methodology of running operations. They bring into account. Most of the operations are automized as far as the international hotels are concerned. So whether they passed on all those informations to them. What is the criteria on which these technologies are required to be used in the hotel for its smooth operation so that you don't suffer later and come into criticism for saying you are not followed the technology to give it to you? That needs to be gone through. That's why I said. These are the agreements to use technologies. List of major. That is more than 5% goods supplied in any six month period supplies. Because this is where the vendor rating comes into picture. Is very, very important. Next one. Next, next ma. Contracts. Copies of all material contracts to which the company is party. You must be aware that all maintenance of the equipment which need to be done on a regular basis, like your lifts, firefighting equipments, all machineries, VG sets, name it, are all based on contracts entered into with the Company. How is the contract to whether it is an annual contract or it is a contract lasting for three years? If so, why the three year contract is entered into what is the special benefit that was given to the company? That and how, what is the periodicity on which the items have to be maintained? What is the cost of the company? What are the parts that are required to be free? If it is under warranty, whether the warranty clause have been put in, whether what are the items covered in warranty, whether it has been followed properly, whether any deviations need to be studied very, very Carefully. If there are breaches, please bring it to the notice. Then, if there are litigations, 
for non compliance of the agreements concerned what is the present state of the litigation whether that litigation is affecting the maintenance of it as a result of which the operators hotel suffered what is the consequence of that have to be gone through then power of attorney if at all given to somebody what is the power of attorney what circumstances has been given what is the power of attorney used to everything need to be done and related party contracts if there are any the next one intellectual property rights that is in state mark service for instance you may have seen that typical five star hotels run about four to five restaurants because otherwise they don't become eligible to have the five star rating at all and you have also seen that they name the each restaurants and the banquet halls in a different way so we need to see whether while naming you have to find out whether any patents were there whether there any breach they are not copied it from somewhere else so that because if we copy there is a possibility that you will be visited with a litigation saying that you have violated the patents which are registered and similarly designs etc are all patents so that no one else copies it becomes their their own property and similarly see whether the trademarks and the patents which this hotel hotel for, for the, the naming of this thing have been registered with the authority so that nobody violates it tomorrow service marks etc legal proceedings disputes what are all the pending legal proceedings that is happening whether any issue this thing is there against the company with reference to the operations or guest problems or any dispute what is the investigations done or labor matter all this need to be gone through very very carefully here i will like to recall one simple this thing related to hr matter in one of the properties of course there is only this thing which have gone through while working in the industry it has nothing else to do three employees who were part of a union which is very sad as far as the industry is concerned were removed from the company for objectionable behavior and creating disruption in the operations and some amount of was given to them and settled off while doing so proper care was not taken to ensure that these people did not get into problem later on these fellows took advantage of loophole with the help of an advocate and filed a suit against the company and the matter went to the labor court labor court ruled it in favor of the employees and saying they should be reinstated and given all the back wages despite the fact that criminal antecedents that was hidden and then the company had to go to the high court to get it vacated and ensure that these people do not get into the this thing so you imagine the amount of time and energy that the required to be spent in taking care of this kind of thing so those things need to be studied very very carefully the insurance policies whether all items have been insured correctly including each and every item in the hotel and public liability insurance is a must as far as the property is concerned minimum it is taken care of through the so your picture is frozen sir your audio is breaking
sir now it's okay it's okay yeah ha huh, yes sir is it moving now it's okay yes sir now okay now go to the next slide ma this is it as i told you non disclosure requirement to be entered into before you start the due diligence exercise due diligence of compliance management this also i touched upon already environmental due diligence today the environment is a very big concern and needs to be taken care of very very carefully otherwise you will be wasted with a lot of suits slapped on you especially from the pollution control board there is a particular way in which the waste need to be disposed of waste management is a very big problem as far as hotels are concerned because you generate tons of waste on a daily basis it needs to be disposed of very carefully and there is an agency we need to be employed and they are required to dispose of this waste in a particular fashion in a particular place otherwise for the irresponsible behavior of the agency which lifts the waste age, you will be wasted with the notice by the pollution control board authorities similarly the oil we which a five star hotel uses cannot be just thrown as you like it it needs to be given off to particular per persons concerned who are authorized to collect it and you are also required to find out what he does with it oil so that it does not get into some other hands and pose a health problem as far as the public is concerned so this is only one of the examples as i gave you as far as environment is concerned plus the contribution of the particular property to the general environment including the maintenance of trees etc are required to be taken care of very very carefully today you will find it is hotels are number one in india as far as environment duties is concerned they have invested a lot of awards for maintaining greenery and they have been voted as a number one hotel as far as eco practices are concerned so this is also very very important then risk analysis as i told in the beginning when i told you the risks which the industry faces how the hotel addresses it how often the risks are assessed whether it is on a yearly basis monthly basis quarterly basis and who are vested with the risk management practices whether a committee is formed for that and whether the committee is what is the function what is agenda given to the committee how often the committee meets what analysis does what report the committee gives and what the management action has been taken action on it etc needs to be taken and minutes have to be done and the committee needs to conduct a meeting regularly and record the minutes and identify the risks and mitigate the risks etc have to be done then data room why this data room because you need to have a separate place for accessing the various records etc which you need for conducting the due diligence at the same time you have to ensure that these data are all stored in soft copies also in a separate data room so that it can be visited whenever it is required and it should be under the safe custody of some person who is responsible for it because these are all very vital and critical and important data you cannot allow it to be leaked out in this the information technology department plays a very very vital role they need to cooperate at each and every stage where are required to conduct the that due diligence and they need to you out also to find out whether all the proper checks and balances there is no security leak the information does not leak out access to the information is restricted to people who are only authorized what is the kind of protection what password protections are given how often backup data is taken all this need to be gone through very very carefully including the operational data on a regular basis how often it is done what is the system that is in place need to be studied and accordingly reported upon for this you may be required to take the help of an expert in it that is also possible then as i said in the beginning the standard operating procedures which are department wise categorized and process put in place need to be revisited depending on the requirement and redrafted and reprocessed whenever it is required 